Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about why it's so difficult to be a Magic the Gathering YouTuber. A lot of you are asking questions like, oh, I want to be a Magic YouTuber. Now the fact I'm trying to get rid of my channel, not get rid of my channel. I am looking for someone to spend more time and pretty much, it sounds kind of strange, but I want someone to take care of the channel better than I can. I've been very open about it. Uh, one of my biggest mistakes recently was I didn't have the right person. And yes, that puts you behind whatever time that was spent finding the person, training the person, and then paying the person, and it doesn't work out. However, I'm going to tell you why it's so difficult and how a smaller channel can w work for Magic the Gathering. Magic Gathering is very niche. It's okay being small. I've always wanted to be... I always enjoyed being small, a smaller channel because you have more interaction, you have more engagement, you don't have as much to deal with in t terms of trolls and disagreements and people taking you your sarcasm too seriously. This is a video, guys. So number one, it's very competitive. So hundreds of hours are uploaded every day on YouTube, probably... I would say hundreds of hours, if not thousands of hours, depending on streamer content is up, mat of magic content is uploaded every single day. There is over 1 million content creators and there is not a shortage of people who are interested in the magic space. Uh, you see local game stores, you see bigger game stores, you see um, Magic the Gathering itself has subscribers. Number two is most people give up and it is very easy to give up. It's really easy to get excited, make a bunch of videos for a month and then no one's watching your videos. And then you're like, oh, well, I'm going to give up. And don't do that. The key is to make videos that you enjoy making. And I enjoy MTG Finance. I've been very honest with you. I don't, lo I don't love the MTG Finance community. I actually really don't like them. And I enjoy MTG Finance. Actually, my Princess Falia, the promo that everyone said was ugly except for me, that I love that promo because they reminded me of like, if you see my artwork and you see Princess Falia, the promo that is now like 100 and, no, $320 fake money, right? But that's what her price is. I took a screenshot of it. I loved it. That's exactly my art style. <laughs> that's the art style I would lo love to own that painting. So... It's okay for your videos not to get very many views. Everyone, you just got to keep doing it because you like it. Uh, next, uh, paid YouTube channels. And paid, so getting paid is a goal of many people. It has become a lot more difficult. I believe you now need to have 4,000 hours of watch time, which comes down to about 10 plus hours a day and a thousand subscribers to be paid that is not easy to do in my opinion and even if you were paid it's so difficult to get paid well in this atmosphere because your uh, cost per thousand views at least for me it's around a dollar sometimes it gets up to a dollar 25 so for every 1000 views at least on my channel you can assume that i'm making a dollar so that is uh, pretty crazy uh, very, very crazy uh, where a lot of times you don't actually have control over what you're going to get paid because it depends on... So I do advertising. I spend probably, if I had to guess, a million dollars on YouTube a year for my clients. Maybe not a million. Yeah, probably a million. Uh, I spend about two million every one million. Twelve million dollars in ads. Yeah, $12 million in uh, Google ads overall. So probably about a million, a million and a half is. So the way that we're getting charged on the advertiser end is it depends on what we want to advertise on. So for automobile clients, um, automotive clients, we only really want to be on auto-related uh, content. We don't want to be on Magic the Gathering content because that's not our core audience isn't 16 to 24-year-old males who like Magic the Gathering. Maybe if um, we were advertising a different type of car, we would, but not a Mercedes-Benz or Lexus, a Jaguar. Of course, we want to advertise a Magic Gathering video. So not only is the the percentage of, uh, it's called 
gross RPM. It's called fill rate and then gross RPM. If you're working traditional, these are terms that you're probably familiar with traditional media as well. You can't control that. Uh, that is determined by buyers and you have no idea what buyers want to do. So why would you ever do this? Why would you ever really want to be a magic YouTuber or give it your all, produce content every day? Um, one of the reasons a lot of people stop producing content or become quote sick is it's not easy. It's very difficult to produce as many videos, but if you're honest and you're truthful and you're just you, I these videos are not edited. These videos are just whatever I feel like talking about to, with you guys. Sometimes there'll be drama, sometimes there'll be cards that are spoiled, sometimes there'll be decks I like. And because it's unfiltered, unedited, they're incredibly easy for me to make. There's no script. I can make two of these videos a day and we just upload it. Now I paid for better internet speed. So actually the time of uploading is actually much, much less than it used to be. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want to do high production, yeah, that's going to take time. That's going to take a lot of effort. You might have to hire other people to help you. That's eventually what I want to do, but I want to keep this part of the channel as well. I want to keep the, you know, I just talk with you guys. Um, very interesting things happening with my business. It's currently undergoing a buyout from me. So typically when you have a buyout, you have a larger investor interested in the company. Well, I want to own a large portion of one of my companies that now I only own a little portion of, and it's a very stressful time. Uh, it's a lot of banking. I was in a bank like every other day. Uh, it's a lot of travel. It's a lot of contracts. It's a lot of legal stuff. And I'll give you guys an update, but I haven't really been playing Magic very much because of the buyout, and it's really consumed my life. That's why I knew, I knew the buyout was coming. I didn't know it would come so early in February, mid-February. I assumed it would come in July, but they came much, much earlier than I expected due to circumstances I couldn't control. Or, and it's just natural circumstances that made it more easy for us to get out now, or for the investors to get out at this point and would have made it much more difficult and have a higher valuation in July. So I wanted to keep the value, I want to keep the value of the company as low as possible and not take it all the way to July. Anyway, that's stuff I'll explain later on. So I knew I needed someone to replace me or someone to create content that you guys enjoyed. So I hired someone, uh, Jessica, you guys will meet Jessica soon enough. She's great. She writes all the content on MTG Lion, Godless, Big Gale. She probably writes 200 blogs a month, which is very, very good for a content writer. That's like top tier, in my opinion, uh, 200, 800 word plus blogs that clients really enjoy that we can actually sell. And she was writing the content for the Magic Channel. So it wasn't like the person we hired came up with her own script. This was always, always pre-scripted and we made it as simple as possible. So I sat down with Jessica and went over how simple we could possibly make it. Now, the fact that it didn't work out means that the you know, I, that I have to do this and you might be like, oh, why don't you focus on your company? Why don't you, this is very relaxing for me. It's fun. Um, it's become, I used to really hate it. I'm not going to lie. I used to really hate making YouTube videos, making finance videos because I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like it really mattered. Um, it was just kind of me making videos. And then when it did matter, when a video went more viral, I would be offended. Now, there are so many more important things in my life. Um, like my employees are number one. I, I am, I'm not going to take a single cent. I'm not going to take a single cent in January. I'm not taking a single cent in February. I'm living off savings, which is very unique to me because I'm not a good saver. Uh, and so there's nothing more important than my employees. My employees have kids. They have families, they have dogs, they have cats, they have things, uh, they have rent, they have, they are the most important part of my life. Um, and then my dogs, I consider my dogs employees too. And it is, 
you know, it is hard when you lose an employee, no matter what happens, because they have you have spent a lot of time with them. You've gone on road trips, you've had lunch, you've gone on field trips, you've gone to different places, and you know them. And you know that um, given my history for hiring, they kind of need them. They need the money, they need the job, they need the ability to grow and learn a trait. My best example of someone I'm very proud of is Amy. Amy came here, worked four or five months, learned something that she really enjoyed doing, and she really loved it. She could do 12, 16 hours of it and just learn and just get better and better at it. Then she found a good job at a huge company. So uh, that nothing makes me more proud than that. Uh, and yeah, it's not great for the company, but uh, I have a new contact and that new contact can bring me, you know, can re reference clients to me. Actually, uh, recently we got a real estate client, a very small real estate client, but nonetheless, she, it was because she told us that we, she told her friend that we do a good job and we do. Anyway, that's it guys. Long video. Bye.